up on this week's newscast, we're getting a glimpse at Bishop Knoll community's thoughts on the COVID vaccine, an introduction of the new head boys basketball coach, John Dotson, and some words of wisdom from the world's greatest boss of the freshman class. Get ready, because this week's episode of BNN starts now. The Drama Club's socially distant production of Clue is right around the corner. The radio style play will be live streamed the weekend of November 20th. Okay, so this year we have two different viewing methods of the play. We are still going to have a live audience, so please do come out. Um, so how we're going to do it is we're going to set a maximum of between 70 and maybe a little less audience members max in the house. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you could still come out and see the show, but there's gonna be a limited amount of ticket sales. We're actually gonna pre-sell tickets this year, so that way each night we have a maximum amount of people. Um, so through the company that we license the play, we are actually able to stream the show, and you have to buy a ticket still to be able to watch it stream. Um, so the Drama Club has been working hard to get the word out about the live stream through a series of TikTok videos they're using to campaign on social media. Um, I think they turned out really funny and it's a really good advertising component. They're all in character, they're all in costume, and it gets people to think, oh hey, what's this all about? So hopefully over the next few weeks we'll be releasing some more TikToks to help advertise. They're just fun to do and everyone's addicted to them, so we thought we'd hop on the trend. Bishop Knoll's virtual production of the classic whodunit comedy Clue will run November 20th through the 22nd with limited auditorium seating and a virtual audience. Today, all students are encouraged to take part in the virtual college fair, which runs from 9.30 to 1. Students will be able to attend the virtual college fair during their classes if teacher allow. Freshmen will go from 9.30 to 9.45, juniors 9.50 to 10.30, seniors 10.35 to 11.15. Everyone again during lunch and sophomores from 12.30 to 1. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for students to participate because you're going to be able to experience uh, different colleges that you may have never seen before or even heard of. Um, so it's a great chance to go out there and ask questions to uh, college reps about your personal interests and what their schools are all about. So my suggestion is when you're actually in the college fair environment is to stop by every single school and ask them some basic questions, you know, what majors they offer, uh, maybe, you know, what kind of activities they have going on through throughout the year. Um, if you're interested in sports, maybe ask about their sports teams as well too and how that looks. But getting to know the different colleges and the different uh, resources that they have at each school is very important for, for all students. There's not a final list yet of colleges, but students will be able to access the virtual environment for the next year. With COVID cases once again spiking around the world, many people are wondering just when this pandemic will end. A COVID vaccine could be in our future, but not everyone is interested in it. Here's Olivia Butchkowski with a special COVID report. As Operation Warp Speed heads into phase three of clinical trials, are you ready to get vaccinated against COVID-19? Studies say no. According to a survey done by the Pew Research Center last month, the share of Americans who say they would get vaccinated for the coronavirus has declined sharply since earlier this year. 51% of U.S. adults say they would definitely or probably get a vaccine to prevent COVID-19 if they're available today. 49% say they would definitely or probably not get the vaccine at this time. Only 21% say they would definitely get a vaccine. BNN conducted our own survey of the Bishop Knoll community, and the results are pretty consistent with the national poll. Among the 208 participants that answered, only 25% said they would definitely get a COVID vaccine, while the other 44% said they were undecided. Nearly 31% of residents said they would definitely not get vaccinated. Researchers say for COVID to be wiped out and herd immunity to be reached, between 70 and 80% of Americans will have to get the vaccine. In the Pew Research Study, concerns about side effects and uncertainty around the effectiveness of a vaccine are widely cited as reasons by those who would not get a COVID-19 vaccine if one were available today. In the BNN survey, 73% of respondents said they'd like to know more about how well the vaccine works before getting it. 62% were concerned about side effects, 13% said they think they don't need it, and nearly 35% had a laundry list of reasons why they wouldn't get vaccinated. Um, if the health officials said that it was safe to get it, I, I probably would. 
I just don't feel like it's safe enough to get one. Yes. In fact, that's what I want for Christmas. I'm, I want the COVID vaccine. I'm ready for it. I've been reading about it for since March. So um, my answer is 100% yes. Although the federal government can't require individuals to get vaccinated, states can require private entities like schools to do so. However, experts from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the American Academy of Pediatrics says schools mandating a COVID vaccine this early could backfire. If the vaccine is applicable to everyone, yes, it should be required for everyone to have it, like any other disease, probably like any other thing that would like conflict in the school like we're required to have. The, uh, COVID should be an exception. Everyone else should have the vaccine itself. Um, if if there were to be a student that wouldn't take, want to take the vaccine, I think like he would have to stay home. Like, well, currently, if he wouldn't want to take it right now, he would probably have to stay home. I think requiring um, things like that are a really kind of sticky situation. Um, in, in a situation like this, a pandemic, you know, vaccines, the more people that get them, the better they work, just like masks, right? Because it's, um, you know, the less host that the virus has to infect. So if more people have the vaccine, then the virus can't infect them, right? It kind of takes that percentage down. So although it would be ideal if a, a, a well-working vaccine that's safe, if more people got it, you know, we're still humans and we, we deserve a choice as to what's best for us. Um. I know a lot of people go out and I kind of go out a lot and they're just like, you know, for like, you know, people not to spread it around. So yeah, kind of. But despite the skepticism over getting the vaccine, 71% of Bishop Knoll respondents said they have a great deal or a fair amount of confidence that the research and development process in the U.S. will produce a safe and effective vaccine for COVID-19. Yeah, I do have faith that there's enough people that are in this country that are smart enough to come up with a vaccine itself. I'm just... I'm just worried that it's going to be effective enough for the virus to completely cancel out like the mask and the, the pandemic, the social distancing, so like life could return to how it was, once was. But other than that, I have no other concerns. Yes, I am confident that they will. Um, this is, you know, regulated by the FDA and there's a very stringent process of several phases that have to go through to make sure that the vaccine is safe. Um, vaccines throughout, you know, the years, the history of vaccine and medicine have been one of the safest forms of medicine that we have. The Food and Drug Administration has said it would authorize a COVID-19 vaccine if it was safe and at least 50% effective in preventing the disease or decreasing the severity of infections. Although Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, has said scientists are hoping for a vaccine that is at least 75% effective. That's all for this week's news. Here's Alexandra with sports. Good morning, BNI. I'm Alexandra with your sports update. The Lady Warriors will begin their basketball season with an away game against Crown Point on Tuesday, November 10th at 7. The first home game will be the following Saturday, November 14th at 6.30 against Valparaiso. The co-ed curling team is back at it again with another win against the Med 4 Radiers. The junior curlers won 2-0 with Francis Ramirez throwing each of the housed stones. Boys basketball is preparing for a new season and a new coach and a whole lot of new changes. Here's Aislinn Rogers with, their, with more on the story. And then, on today's news, we'll be officially meeting Bishop Knows new head boys basketball coach and alum, John Dotson. He graduated in class of 2012 and was a part of the 2011 state runner-up team. So my first question to you is, how does it feel to be back at your old high school coaching basketball? Um, it feels pretty good. Um, you know, I think this is one of the most exciting opportunities that I could have had. Um, you know, I've been doing coaching for the last couple of years. Um, definitely once I saw the opportunity open back up, I thought it'd be no, no better place to do it than home. Dotson, who also played college basketball at Benedictine, is familiar with the coaching style at Bishop No, having played under coach Jude Tross and former assistant coach Josh Bellumini. 
Um, you know, for my coaching style, I would say it is, um, you know, for one, being energetic. Um, I'm not too far removed from the game myself, so I like to have a lot of energy. Um, you know, really like to push the guys. Uh, you know, like to have a lot of fun as well. So, although the boys' program and the entire athletic department is excited for Dotson's familiarity with no smarts of the game and professionalism. The current team is still reeling after losing a talented squad of players to graduation last year, as well as going through four different coaching staffs in the past three years. And Amal, what are you looking most forward to this season? Um, really, I'm looking forward to, I'm really looking forward to Monster, our first game. I want to show people, show people what I've been working on, improving over the summer. Ever, how would you describe Coach Dotson's coaching style? Uh, I describe it as like it's kind of hard, but like he just wants us to have a, like a lot of energy. He pushes us uh, all the time. Noel is very excited to welcome back alum John Dotson and looks forward to cheering the boys basketball team on this upcoming season. Tryouts will take place in November, and their first scheduled game is November 25th against Munster High School. Guess what? I have flaws. What are they? Oh, I don't know. I sing in the shower. Sometimes I spend too much time volunteering. Occasionally, I'll hit somebody with my car. So sue me. <laughs> One step the drama. Says, I've heard that the COVID vaccines have things to control people. I wouldn't trust that they would put something in it. I think it's the mark of the beast. The government is coming after us. They're trying to control us. I'll get it when Jeff Bezos gets it. Mm. It's a government scam that's going to kill you to decrease the population. The vaccine, to me, is the government trying to push out something on us, such as the mark of the beast, and I'm not for it at all.